Hi, and welcome to our compliance process video for the MCC nursing department programs. This video will apply to any of our programs uh, in the nursing department at MCC. Here's a quick overview of the process. I'm just going to read these through really fast, but you can also um, print this out from our compliance webpage for a little checklist to work from. Uh, fingerprinting and clearance card, or I'm sorry, your fingerprinting and your clearance card are ordered, your CPR co card through the American Heart Association, uh, your Complio account created and your background check will be ordered, you'll sign your background check with Complio, big step to do, um, your health care provider appointment, and you will bring your health care signature form. Um, you'll gather all your health and safety documents and you're going to upload them to Complio. Uh, next you'll create your My Clinical Exchange account. You're going to connect your Complio and My Clinical Exchange accounts together and sync them. You're going to fill in any other items that are not done in My Clinical Exchange from the sync. Uh, in drug screening you can wait on that. We'll give you instructions on that. You'll submit your MCE account for approval if there's anything you had to upload or fill in. You can, you'll do that at this point. Make sure your admissions are done. You will send your email or contact to our department, your contact person in our department, and tell them you're in compliance ready to register. And then the um, big step at the end is your clinical compliance. So let's go through all of this in detail. Okay, first step, fingerprinting. You're going to need your level one fingerprint clearance card to take with you to your clinical rotations. You'll need to upload an image of it, of course, for your compliance items, but you'll need to have it on your person with you at clinical. Okay, it's just a good idea, a good habit, keep it with you. Um, if you say you've been fingerprinted for work or something like that before, but you don't have the actual card, contact Arizona DPS and see if they can just send you a card um, if there's a process for that. We can't really help you apply for your card, but it's a pretty straightforward process. They also have a phone number on their website that you can call for help. Okay, Make sure your card also isn't going to expire during your program. And for your healthcare provider level CPR card, you can find a class on the American Heart Association's website directly. This is what you will need to turn in. It will look like this or this. These are the only two that we will accept. It must be BLS provider and absolutely must be through the American Heart Association. This is required by our clinical partners. They will not accept anything else. If you have this, but not through the American Heart Association, Association sorry, you will need to retake the course so you have it through the American Heart Association. This is the standard. Okay, so make sure before you go forward, your fingerprinting is done and your card has been ordered, your application went in, and you have scheduled, at least scheduled, or completed your CPR class. Okay, so if you're ready to go, got those done, here we go. Next up, we have Complio. This is our pre-screen and background check website that we use. First, you're going to log in to MaricopaCompliance.com and you will go ahead and create an account if you don't have one already. You will get an email from them and go ahead and purchase your background check and your immunization tracker. There's a little video with that process. Okay, once you click on the link, it'll bring you in to where you can purchase um, whatever packages you need to. Make sure you select the right options here, your school, your program. 
Okay, and load packages. You'll see here, um, you can purchase the tracker and background check and skip the drug screening for now. Make sure you fill this out thoroughly. Read every option. Make sure if you don't have a social security card number, you mark that correctly. Okay, we don't need the rest of it. There's a bunch of pages you'll um, click through, agree and sign. And then the last page is where you pay for the packages. Okay, um, also be sure to answer, yes. Okay, so social security number, some people do not have one. Answer this correctly because your background check depends on it, okay? Um, also, there's I think there's a section for middle name right here. If you don't have one, make sure you mark that correctly. Uh, driver's license, yes or no. You don't have to have one, so you don't have to mark yes, okay? There's no uh, penalty for marking no. Just mark it accurately. Uh, okay, this is just another note about it. Um, the, most importantly, some people every now, you know, every now and then we get a student that does not pass their background check. So um, you'll have reasoning sent to you as to why you did not pass the background check. You will need to clear that up with whichever agency flagged your background check, okay? Um, we can't really fix it for you or help you clear your background check. Um, and we can't let anyone into the program without it. So just make sure you know if there's a problem, you have to read what Complio sent you and contact whichever agency flagged your background check. Once you have passed your background check, that is not um, completely done. You will need to log in to Complio after you pass, and there will be a certificate, background check pass certificate that you will need to sign. It needs your actual signature, right? So you'll see um, here, there is a um, little pull down menu you're going to sign. It'll once you you'll have a notification in your Complio account to sign something. Don't ignore it. Just make sure you follow the instructions. Um, the page, this page of instructions is actually on our um, compliance website for MCC nursing. So you'll see that um, you can get this sheet of instructions there if you need it. And your health and safety checklist is going to be your best friend while you're getting your compliance items done. We have it on our compliance web page. You should have one probably emailed to you from your contact person in the nursing department. Just make sure you have that readily available as you work your way through your compliance items. Okay, so some of your health requirements will expire. Uh, so you want to make sure to keep this in mind. Uh, if you're if you're attending in fall, your items must be good through the middle of December. If you're attending in spring, they must be good through pretty much mid May. We can't have any of your compliance items expiring during the semester. Uh, you won't be able to, to be put in a clinical because you have items expiring during your clinical and uh, that just doesn't, doesn't fly. So make sure you keep in mind there are some items that can expire out while you're in the program. So here's a little table of how that goes. Okay, so our district office has a nice health and safety video for all of the health programs that they offer. Uh, I'm not going to play it because it's about 15 minutes long, but just know that you have a, if you have a question about a specific requirement or you want to go more in depth with what each requirement on that list means, they do a really good job of explaining each item. 
When you are ready to upload your documents, you are going to gather all of your vaccination records, make sure they are on official documentation. Uh, you wanna make sure they hit all these items on this list and they're not handwritten and that they don't look like this. Uh, these items don't, as you see this one, does not show First of all, the person's name, the healthcare provider's name, the facility name. Uh, it has dates and the items, but it's very, very, um, you can, anyone can write that in. So we want it to look official. Most of us have these baby shot record um, little booklets. Uh, we won't accept that either. It needs to be uh, official documentation. Okay, to briefly explain the TB testing requirement, you're going to need to turn in a two-step or a blood draw. The two-step is two complete TB tests. Step one is you get it injected, you get it read, you get a result. You're not finished. You go again about a week later after the first one, you get your second injection, your second reading, your second result. Get them all documented on official documentation, and that's what you will turn in. Make sure they are two complete TB skin tests. They cannot go more than three weeks apart. If you hit day 21 and you're thinking, oh, I better, I'll go tomorrow, do not wait one more day because if you wait till day 22, you're going to have to start step one, go all the way back to the start and do step one again and then continue until you get your two step within the window that we're, that's required. Okay. Uh, even easier than that, way easier than that is a blood draw. It'll have the result. You get your official documentation from whatever lab, and that's what you'll turn in for your initial TB testing. After you do your initial, you're going to get an update every year. Um, oh, and make sure this is uh, pretty recently. Done. They expire after a year. So um, here's another just quick explanation of the TB2 step. You see the injection one, result one, injection two, result two. If you go past day 21, you're going to start over again. So just a quick example of what a good TB testing documentation looks like. Step one has the date given the date read and the result, all of the important information, your name, provider name, and about a week later, a little over a week later, they did the same thing, date given, date read, result, all good documentation. This is what we wanna see. Okay, so, oh, you'll also make an appointment with your healthcare provider. I don't know anybody who's done this whole process and not had to go to their healthcare provider for something. So just um, make sure any documents you're missing, um, a lot of people have to get a, a fresh Tdap, uh, flu shot, and anything you don't have completed. Say you only have records of one MMR, you never got your varicella, which is chicken pox, you never got immunized for chicken pox, varicella, but you know you've had chicken pox. We get that question a lot. What you're going to do is you're going to get blood work done, titers for varicella to prove that you are immune. If you are not immune, you are going to start the varicella series, okay? Um, MMR, same thing, say, well, most people haven't had measles, but anyway, um, say you, you can't find your vaccinations for MMR, but you know that you were immunized. Your mom says, yes, you were immunized for MMR. You got all your baby shots done, but I don't know where they are. Your doctor's office closed down. So what you're going to do is you can get blood work to prove your immunity for measles, mumps, rubella. Okay, so easy as that. Um, Hep B titers, you can also, if you don't have those records, get blood work to prove your immunity for Hep B.
while you're working on your requirements and you get blood work done, maybe for some, uh, just know that sometimes in a, you can have an equivocal or a negative for one of the titers. You'll just start the series. Um, Hep B, varicella, MMR are the ones that um, we most often see and continue to get your vaccinations on the schedule your health care provider gives you and turn those in as you progress through the series. The other thing is sometimes your MMR can be partially equivocal or negative. So you're going to turn in the, the record of your, your lab work and you'll get one MMR booster and turn those in together. So here is a brief video for Uploading to Complio. Uploading documents into Complio. Before you start submitting your compliance requirements, you will need to gather your documentation. Your institution dictates what information is needed for each requirement. Click the Requirement Explanation button to view instructions on the compliance requirements for your institution. You may need to contact your healthcare provider to receive some of the required documentation. Make sure that your name and your provider's name are clearly visible on each document, along with the date the service was provided. If the documentation is not a digital file, you can take a photo or scan it. If documentation can be found online, you can simply take a screenshot or print to a PDF. Documents that are uploaded don't have to be perfect as long as they can easily be read by an administrator. They don't usually need to be in color or taken with the highest quality. Something clear and in grayscale is perfect. It's a good idea to check the documentation before uploading. Simply open it on your computer. If you can read everything clearly, then it's good to use for Complio. Complio will accept many common image and document file formats. Complio will allow you to upload several files at once, but the limit is 20 megabytes at a time. Once you have your documentation collected digitally, you are ready to upload. Log into Complio and your dashboard will load with your compliance requirements. From here, there are two ways to upload your documents into Complio. The first way is to upload them directly as you enter your compliance requirements. Click Enter Requirement next to the specific category you are ready to update. Complio will provide an explanation of what is needed. After you enter the requested information, you need to link or associate the appropriate documentation. Drag and drop files or use the Browse button to attach your documents. You can upload multiple documents at once if needed. Once you are satisfied with your entry, click Submit to notify an administrator that the item is ready to be reviewed. Clicking Submit will save the document you've attached. If you need to use the same documents again for other requirements, you'll be able to quickly select them from the Documents drop-down. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention earlier was to make sure when you're saving your uh, files, take a picture of it with your phone or what have you, make sure you, whoops, make sure you name your file something that you can recognize. So when you're placing it and these items, uh, it's, it's going to be, save you a bunch of time, right? So you're not clicking through to figure out which, what each one is. When you do go see your healthcare provider to finish up your health uh, and safe health requirements, make sure you bring this document with you. It is the statement of clearance. Some of our old documentation says healthcare provider signature form. The newer documents will say statement of clearance right here. Just know that it's the same thing. You're going to take it with you to your doctor's office, healthcare provider, and they are going to fill it out for you. Make sure your name's on it too. You're going to upload it as one of your, your health requirements. Okay, one quick note about drug screening. Don't do it until we give you instructions. We'll give you very specific instructions when the time comes. You're going to have $58 ready to go for this item. Uh, avoid poppy seeds. Seriously, we do see people fail their drug screening because they eat poppy seed items and it turns up as an opiate in your system. And when you go to other, order the drug screening, you'll just um, select this. 
Okay. In Complio, your items will be approved or declined. If you have something declined, don't panic. Okay, you're going to read their reasoning as to why your item was declined um, and make whatever corrections it asks. Resubmit it with the corrections. If it's declined again, well, then um, we have a, a misunderstanding on one of the compliant, the compliance item. So you're going to need some help probably. Make sure you email your contact person in nursing um, with the following. Your email should look like this. The appropriate person in the subject, make sure it says what the issue is um, so they know what they're looking for. Who are you in our system? Where, when are you joining us? Um, you know, which block, which program? Um, what are you getting into compliance for? Fall 24 or upcoming, it'll be spring 25. Um, your document is attached. Let's see, the, the document that was declined was, is attached and a screenshot or many um, with the compli Complio's notes and maybe the, the page that you're uploading to so we can help you figure out what's wrong. And, um, oh, some of you will need to, for medical or religious purposes, decline a compliance item. So with us, you're going to fill out the declination form, declination acknowledgement form you can find on Complio above. I, it's usually at the top of each compliance item uh, we're going to upload. And uh, you read it 100% through. It's not, you're going to submit it and it's not going to be approved or declined. It will be just kept for our records, okay? It doesn't, uh, and as the form does state, you, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to attend clinical. It's just to tell us that you're declining this or that item, okay? Okay, so um, for the frequently asked questions, I would say the most important thing is, um, this we hear a lot, you're waiting for them to approve you in Complio. Yes, so you're just gonna have to wait. It can take like a week or two at times when it's very busy. Uh, we know you need your drug screening. Um, we know that the vaccinations um, have time intervals between you can get them. So just work your way through them. Uh, and your T TB2 step, I went over that, I think three screens. So that should be pretty clear now. Uh, okay. And now that you've turned everything in, got it all fixed up, it should, your Complio page should look like this. Um, green check marks and the red should be just your drug screening. If an item looks like this next to instead of a green check mark, that means it's just um, in review still. So you'll have to wait until it turns into a green check mark. Okay, so before you go on to the next step, make sure your screen looks just like the one before and you have signed your background check certificate in Complio. Your background check will not have a green check mark unless you have signed the background check certificate. That is, you'll have a notification for that, but make sure you just look for it once you know you passed your background check. Okay, my clinical exchange is our next. You're going to go make an account on my clinical exchange, right? You're going to select your program and pay for your account. Link your Complio and my clinical exchange accounts together. Okay. Here is this. So this is how you connect it. This page is on our compliance web page. So you'll see it, connecting your MCE and ADB accounts. Make sure you have your login information 100% correct for Complio because you're gonna enter that in My Clinical Exchange. Okay, some steps to success because that's what we want. Um, once you've synced your accounts, it should fill in, auto-populate a ton of information from Complio. Not everything though, um, imports over because it's specific to MCE. So make sure you read each of the items that did not fill in and fill them out. Date of birth, flu clinic, it tells you exactly what to do next to the item. Put 
yes or no. Health insurance will always be NA. The last four of your social, the last five of your social. Don't ask why, it's just there. Uh, our our um, clinical partners have asked for these items, so that's why we do them. You're gonna say proficient or yes for English and a copy of your driver's license, just the image of it you're going to put in there and you're gonna submit, okay? Alrighty, another thing, don't um, upload any items that should have gone through Complio first. Say you got another, your second MMR, don't put it in my clinical exchange. It must run through Complio and then be synced over to my clinical exchange, okay? So once you've finished out, finished your items in um, my clinical exchange, just make sure you hit submit, 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 um, and that should take care of it. Your next item to do is make sure you've done your admissions for the semester you're going to attend. So say right now it's April and I'm starting block one in fall of 24. I'm going to go log into uh, my student account and make sure I am in the system. My account says fall 24 MCC. Okay, if it's the wrong school, we can't register you. If it's like two semesters ago, we cannot register you. So make sure your admissions status is up to date for the semester you hope to be registered for. Okay, here we go. Oh, I did go over this. Um, 100%, you wanna be 110% sure that you are admitted for the semester you're going to be registered for and the school you want to be registered for, okay? Um, then you're just going to email your contact person or follow the, step, the instructions that you were given for your next steps in order to be registered. In your correspondence with your contact person in our program, you're always, actually it's a good habit to get into, always, 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 including your phone number, your student ID number, not your MEID, your student ID number will start with a three and have numbers. Okay, your program, what program are you in and which semester are you joining us for or starting with us, okay? And what cohort, sometimes we have little like block 1 a.m., block 1 p.m., and so on and so forth, okay? Um, once you've done that, you're, you're registered, we'll let you know you've been registered if everything checks out okay, and you're good to go. They'll give you further instructions, but I'm gonna briefly go over your clinical compliance because it's a very important component of your compliance. Okay, all students in Maricopa Nursing must take care of their clinical compliance. You will be assigned more than one clinical site throughout your time, even more than one in a semester, okay? So make sure you are watching your clinical compliance in my clinical exchange. That's where our banner, Dignity, Honor Health, uh, Phoenix Children's, uh, and so on, they make sure you're in compliance in there so you can attend their uh, clinical and be around their patients, right? So they trust that we are taking care of this um, on our end. And it is your responsibility, 100%. It stops with you. Make sure you're in compliance for clinical, okay? Um, you will get warnings, I believe, from Complio and MCE. So make sure you are reading those emails regularly. Don't ignore them. Emails asking, and I am I in compliance? Don't email, don't call, don't walk up to the counter asking if you're in compliance. I say this because I care. You should be able to go in and check your compliance, okay? On your own in Complio and my clinical exchange. Okay, so, but for declinations, this is our next step, right? Because it's another part of your clinical compliance. You let us know that you're declining something. So that is done. And next you're going to apply for an exemption with your clinical site. So when you're put in a clinical, you're going to have a checklist for your specific rotation. Everything that you've done up to that point, um, MMR, Hep B, fingerprint clearance card, so on and whatever, that is all going to fill in. Whatever your clinical site needed from that list will fill in. You will have to do 
documents, modules, exams, to finish training and taking care of your compliance for that clinical site. They have their own specific checklist for you. Okay. Um, you will have, they, they'll have a procedure for each um, agency, clinical agency, on um, what you will need to do to ask for an exemption. So say you have a medical thing, you can't get the flu shot, you will fill out a form that will be in their checklist. Follow their instructions specifically because you're asking them for the exemption. You're asking them for permission, right? Okay. So just remember, you'll do this for each clinical site throughout your time in the program. Say you did it for Banner in the fall, you're going to do it again for your, every rotation you're in, Banner, Honor Health, what have you. Keep that in mind. You'll be okay. Okay. And if you're, uh, if you're wondering, are you in compliance? Okay. Step one, check Complio. Do you see anything expiring? They also will email you if you have anything expiring. Um, you upload any updates directly to Complio, you'll wait for approval, and then you'll sync it to MCE. So it must feed into MCE. Okay. Next, you'll check MCE, make sure everything's synced. You might have to hit the sync button and um, then you're done. That'll be, that would be nice. So um, check your clinical rotations, make sure you have everything done in there. A lot of the documents are just, uh, you'll see when you get to that point, a lot of things in your documents list is just something you have to read and maybe check a box that you read it. Um, some small exams to take. Fill in and submit everything that needs attention. I've seen students exited for not signing a document in their clinical rotation and they were out of compliance. They could not attend clinical. They were exited from the program. This is not going to happen to you because you're going to get it done, right? Okay. And if you're not sure what to do, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Please ask your classmates, ask your contact in your, uh, your, your compliance contact in the department, ask for help. Okay. Okay, this is another view of my clinical exchange. If you're looking at your compliance, um, it could be pending, it could be not required, it could be done. Okay, so you're always looking for green, always going for green. Okay, and then for the important contacts for compliance, this is going to be updated and listed regularly on our compliance webpage. So this list of links is going to be, oh, it is on our compliance webpage for MCC, the nursing department. This is something I put it in bright red because I didn't want to forget. Um, you can go for your admissions to check your admission status. Go to the portal.maricopa.edu. That will take you to check your admissions as your student account. You probably know this already, but here it is anyway. Um, check your student account. Make sure you have your admissions done for the semester you want to be uh, registered for. Okay, that brings us back to this last slide. Um, it's just the checklist. I put it up on the clinical of the compliance webpage for MCC nursing and uh, you can print it out if you like and uh, oh just no you this process seems crazy and very difficult and very complicated but you're gonna get it done just take it one step at a time go through the video rewind it I mean <laughs> back it up as you need to and um, you're gonna do great reach out if you need help we're here for you and uh, good luck.